Welcome back to Street Smart. Steve Jobs made a rare public appearance today while unveiling a new cloud computing product at the Apple Worldwide Developers Conference. Joining us right now for insight into today's news out of Apple is Colin Gillis. He's senior analyst at BGC Partners. Hey, Colin. Hey, Carol. So what's the bigger news today, seeing Steve Jobs up on that stage or actually what they had to say about what they're doing at the company? You know, I think in terms of the actual fundamentals of the business, it was great to see Steve Jobs and, you know, the big round of applause and then we love you, but you got to focus in on what the products are and what they're shipping. And so I'd say the fundamentals of the business were are the more important piece of news. And the big piece of news is the iCloud. You like this? Yeah, you know, we do like it. I mean, it's not, uh, it's not as much of a gangbuster piece of news as new hardware announcements are. Right? Right. I think you know there were still some people who thought perhaps there would be that one more thing and the iPhone 5 would pop out. But I mean, most of the indications are that you know this is going to be a September event. So in terms of the, the software update, it's good because it's it makes it more sticky for users to get locked into this ecosystem, and that's a positive for Apple. That is a positive for Apple. A crucial for Apple, too, going forward, Colin? You know, the cloud is pretty crucial if you think about that, right? So if you start loading all of your mo movies and music and uh, your songs onto the cloud, but most importantly, your documents, right? Because mm -hmm. the key thing here is that the PC sales, the Mac sales, that's the number two revenue stream for this company. And there's lots of headroom for this company to continue in that area. They've only got 8% market share. So the PCs are a big driver. People kind of forget about that, don't they? Absolutely. And for all the talk about, you know, the tablet market, et cetera, right? You know, the PCs are high ticket items, right? The ASPs on these things, you know, are in that $1,600 range. And again, right, they're continuing to grow share as more and more users get uh, sucked into the iOS ecosystem and say, hey, I use an iPhone, I use a tablet, maybe I want to go and buy a laptop or a desktop computer. You almost had a little disappointment, though, out of the news that we got from Apple. Are you, I know you said it's not as exciting as, as when you get a new piece of hardware yeah. from the company, but you, even, you sound like a little disappointed. You know, it's like, it's eye over. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, right? right here, here we go, we had it. Well, is that why the stock is down? Why is the stock down today? I mean, I think there's a couple things. Things, right? So if you take Apple in the broader perspective, right? I mean, here's a stock that's growing, you know, trading at 14 times earnings, you know, that, that's growing revenues, the 70% range, right? It's a tremendous uh, value for its growth, right? You know, so it's growth at a reasonable price. There's so, an intraday, though. Take a look at that. I mean, yeah. it's gone and gone down as, sure. as the news has come out. Sell the news, right? I mean, so that, that's, yeah, sell the news. You didn't get any new hardware. Not only did they kind of pre-announced what was going to happen today, which is a little bit odd for it was Apple. It well telegraphed, wasn't it? It well telegraphed. Well, actually, they put a press release out saying, you know, hey, we're going to have Steve Jobs, and here are going to be the you know, the features, it's going to be a software event. But again, I think they did that so people didn't build up too much expectations for, you know, an iPhone 5. You feel pretty comfortable about this company going forward. I mean, it's up about 5%. Adam Johnson was just up there showing a star, you know, a chart. We were looking at tech stocks overall and how they're undervalued. But it hasn't done a heck of a lot this year, Apple. No, absolutely not. Yeah, and, you know, again, I think you have kind of, it's going to be kind of grinding sideways until you get more in the back half of the year when you get the back-to-school selling season and the holiday season. But, you know, a lot of that's, you know, already known. But what, what else are you going to buy in the space, right? I mean, it's still, uh, like we said before, growth, the, the valuation compared to its growth is highly appealing. You know, it's one of the most innovative companies that are out there. You know, it still has a tremendously strong balance sheet. They should return some of that cash to shareholders via a dividend or a stock buyback, though. So are you all... Well, do you expect that, though? No. <laughs> but, they don't have but they to, should, do they? right? They, you know, I mean, efficient capital usage would dictate that, you know, shares at this price range, right? right? You know, they should be buying back hand over Why fist. Why aren't they, Colin? You know, that's a great question. We don't have a good answer to it. Uh, mm -hmm. I think part of it is, you know, they're trying to, they said they want to hold on to it for, you know, a, a big acquisition. Um, and, uh, but, you know, nothing's really been done. And, you know, what are you going to buy with that much money, right? You know, I mean, uh, Facebook? I don't know. What so. would you want? What would you want them to buy? Uh, you know, so there's a lot of talk about, you know, what could they? There's a lot of people played that game. What yeah. could they buy? You're not right? playing it. I'm not going to play it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you're going to start looking then towards what later this year for for new hardware from Apple. That's Absolutely. kind of the, the next big catalyst, essentially. Sure, I think so. Well, earnings is the next catalyst, right? You know, and they always Fair put up good earnings. And we got uh, an interesting tip on the iPad numbers, right? They said 25 million and 14 months. So if you do a little quick math, uh, you realize it's about 5.5 million units shipped uh, in the current quarter, which uh, makes me comfortable with my 6.9 million uh, unit estimate. So uh, on, on a sales per day, it's actually tracking above what I was expecting. Hey, since you brought up numbers, I mean, that's one of the things that blew, blew me away again. I mean, they talk about paying more than $2.5 billion to App Store developers. The App Store's got more than 425,000 applications. It's sold more than 15 billion songs, uh, more than 25 million iPod, iPads since its debut. I mean, those are crazy numbers. Crazy numbers. And I think it's also worth pointing out that, you know, this is the developers conference, right? This is not like, a, you know, a press release right. or a product. This is 
is a, right? This is the event to get the developers in, you know, to sort of show here's why you should be building for our ecosystem. Because ultimately, if you don't have developers building on your platform, your platform is not going to, you know, become much bigger than than just what it is on itself. So, mm. uh, you know, they are good at retaining their developers, paying their developers, and making sure the developers have tools to extend their ecosystem. And you're going to see that with iCloud as well. Colin, one last question. I mean, from what we got from Apple today, I'm looking yeah. through all these headlines here. Does it say to you that Steve Jobs is definitely still in charge there, or is it Tim Cook leading the charge? Uh, you know, I mean, they've always been a pair, right? And I think that that pairing is still very much uh, in, in place, right? And so, you know, you know, Tim has done a great job at, you know, picking up any slack left over while Steve's been on medical leave. Right. But, you know, there's no doubt about it. You know, Steve likes to have his stamp, and he likes to be on that big stage, you know, right. whenever possible. And he kicked it off, and he closed it today, didn't he? And I think yeah, the, the, the last song before he walked on stage was James Brown's I Feel Good. So, yeah, <laughs> I, I bet there was a little message in there. you got to love it. Hey, Colin, always good to get some time. Thank you. Thank you. Colin Gillis, he's senior analyst over at BGC Partners.